as usual, um, up there with the rest of them on an international standard, um, setting the pace for South Africa, really making us proud. Gavin Raja is absolutely amazing. For me, there are three kings that rule South African fashion. Gavin Raja, David Lally and Khair Jahan Kassir. So every year I make it a point that I watch those three shows and see what we can expect, you know, in, in the next season. Gavin Raja, South Africa's most famous export. He joins us moments after his wildly successful luminescent luxury collection. Gavin, congratulations. Thank you very what much. A show. Thank you. Right. It's all about the bells and whistles, it's all about that couture. And, and uh, this Fashion Week has actually captured that for you, has it? Well, this Fashion Week is quite interesting because, uh, you know, the collection we showed tonight was just the one we've just shown now recently in New York. Mm -hmm. And in terms of that, it was just, you know, following on a great, you know, reception in New York. It's amazing to come back home and to have the same type of reception. Um, and for me, it's a new collection. And it's a collection which is about a new type of romance, a new type of kind of, I think, spirit emerging in terms of women. Because women are now wanting to look very feminine, but at the same time not compromise their assertive kind of presence in the marketplace, whether it be business or, you know, just as that kind of people in the home, home. And it was really inspired by the 50s and subverting the notion of what women were in the 50s and bringing it into a present day context. You talked about your theme being feminine, 1950s, the liberated woman, and, uh, you know, you talked to that. And, 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 and is, it, is it fair to say that people overseas don't expect that of Africans? They don't expect that amount of subtlety from Africans? Yeah, and they don't expect that you could have looked at the 1950s and took out two quintessential movies, which are American movies. One, I mean, my collection was inspired by two movies. One was uh, Tarzan, which was like really a parody about stereotypic things that happen in Africa. And then A Summer Place, which was really about romance and, and in a way the sexual emancipation of women. But, um, you know, I think for them they were blown away because I think quite often they think we do things which are just fun and frivolous. But for people to do things which are serious and to have some, and couture is all about, it's an art form, and to have some form of real kind of inspiration and thought behind that collection, of course is like fascinating for them because they're not used to it. The African market is on the verge of boom. I mean, we've got this huge consumer market that uh, is, is coming, coming of age and the fashion design business all of a sudden is looking like a serious business. Something that uh, somebody that would you know, actually uh, enter. What would you then advise for this time now? Well, you know, it's quite interesting, hey. Uh, we have a lot of people who are investing a lot of things in this country and the one thing that they don't invest is in the creative industries and the design because they find it it's quite a, it's, it's a scary thing for them because it's a, it, they can't really box it. They can't really, it's not a tangible type of thing. But if you think the top, you know, the 100 kind of top FTSE-led industries in the UK are all design-led businesses, you know, and if we don't invest in it, then we're not going to have an LVMH, we're not going to have a PPR or a Gucci group. I mean, and all those people had the vision to go that distance and to invest. And creating brands means investing in money uh, in, in businesses. And I think to a lot of people, they feel that it's just, you know, design is sometimes a black hole. It's, you know, there's, uh, they can't kind of, there's no finite kind of boundaries between things. But I think the time is right. I mean, Africa is a huge consumer of luxury goods and it's about time, I think, people invest in creating our own luxury brands. We have so much at our disposal, We're exotic skins, indigenous oils, I mean, a myriad of plants and weird and crazy things out there. And I mean, we're even producing our own forms of silk and cashmere and things like that. And it's amazing to be, to be able to do that. But it takes kind of really visionary kind of business leaders to want to look at it and say, right, let's do that and let's kind of put something together.